Now we all agree that wine is fascinating and intriguing and wonderful and we all spend lots of time focusing on what's inside the bottle. But friends, let me ask you, when was the last time you looked at what's on top of your bottle? Yes, I'm talking about the cork, the most preferred stopper for wine bottles for centuries at end now. Today we're going to talk about the different types of corks that are out there. They may all look and feel the same, but in fact, they're not. They're all made differently and some of them are not corks at all. So come on, tune into our video today and let's explore the world of corks. So first, let's look at what we know of as the natural cork. This is a single piece of cork, which is taken from the bark of the cork oak tree. The first great property it has is it's actually elastic. And so because it's kind of, you know, it can be compressed, it kind of, you know, when it's inserted into the wine bottle, it assumes the shape of the neck of the bottle and it therefore provides a nice airtight seal. It prevents oxygen from going in and spoiling the wine. Secondly, it is porous. Now, it allows very minuscule quantities of oxygen over a long period of time to enter, interact with the wine and make the wine softer, mellower, open up its aromas and flavors. And the third great reason for using corks is that it's 100% natural. It's recyclable, it's biodegradable, it's renewable. So basically, it's loved by those wineries that are environmentally conscious. Other main reason also is that corks are expensive. Sometimes it is almost three times the price of a good screw cap even. Um, so basically because it's expensive, it becomes a viable option to use only on those wines that are expensive, that are premium, that are intended for long-term aging. So to make it more cost-effective, what we have in the market are, are agglomerated corks. Now agglomerated corks, if you look closely, are actually, it's not a single piece of cork. It is many pieces and larger pieces of cork stuck together by some kind of a plant resin or, or glue uh, and it's kind of stuck together by using pressure. The thing I don't like about agglomerated corks is that if it is made from a very low quality cork granule material, then sometimes this disintegrates. Uh, especially for those of us who tend to make a mistake with keeping our wines uh, for too long or maybe in the refrigerator, sometimes these cork granules come apart. And then we find that every time we're going to uncork this bottle of wine, we find that some of these cork particles fall back into the wine and then they land up in our wine glasses, which is quite annoying. Uh, and then we kind of tend to think, oh my God, is this wine spoiled? Should I be consuming it? So it kind of leads to all this confusion. But that's one annoying point that I find about agglomerated corks, but obviously there's more and more technology being used nowadays to make higher quality examples. Have you ever wondered actually why this is the shape of a mushroom, uh, which is very typical of, of bottles of sparkling wines, you know, the corks always have a, have a look of a mushroom. I'm going to tell you that in a minute, but before that, let's take a look at the anatomy of the cork. So in this cork, there is the top part of the cork is agglomerated. What I mean by that is it's many particles, large pieces of cork granules stuck together uh, with a glue and compressed with pressure to make it a single piece. But at the bottom, the part which touches the wine inside, that is in fact two or three or even a single disc of natural cork. So this is the part that is, you know, the natural cork, the high quality material that is right here at the bottom. And you know what is fascinating is that this stopper is actually a cylindrical shape before it goes inside the bottle. So when this goes in like a cylinder, over a period of time, the part that is compressed inside the bottle remains lean, whereas the part that is outside turns into this button mushroom because it kind of expands. And so when you uncork and pop open the bottle of champagne, it kind of comes out looking like a mushroom and it stays this way. But I just want you to know that it wasn't like this when it went in. It went in like any other cork, you know, shape, like a cylinder, but comes out looking like this. Now, how fascinating was that for you to know? And then what do we have here? Oh, look, this looks like a cork but it's not, it's actually plastic. It's not even cork. So um, a lot of companies that are making very, very inexpensive wines, you really need to keep costs under control. 
they kind of tend to use plastic corks. Uh, these are my least favorite, sorry guys, but I find that one, they're very hard. They lack the elasticity, they lack the porosity, they, they, you know, they don't have a good feel. They're generally very hard. So I don't know if you've ever encountered this, but sometimes you kind of really struggle with taking a cork out of a bottle. You're losing, you're using all your strength and it's, it just doesn't seem to come off. And then by some God's grace or some miracle, it does come out. It doesn't go back in again. With a piece of cork like this, you can still get lucky with trying to push it back in if you want it at least halfway in, right? You could try that with any of these corks. But with the plastic cork, I generally find Fine because they lack the elasticity and they don't sort of compress at all it's very difficult to put back into the bottle which means that you absolutely need to have a proper stopper or some sort of a equipment to keep the wine fresh uh, you know in case you don't end up uh, drinking the rest of the bottle so plastic corks are my least favorite but you know on a more positive note they come in all these attractive colors and uh, basically this is to have fun you know when you're trying to make wine fun and you're making a lot of these lovely cheerful everyday drinking sort of wines you can you can you can be innovative and after looking at these synthetic corks what do we have we have plastic or wooden bar tops now bar tops are incredibly versatile and what's amazing is that they're super easy to use you don't need a corkscrew to use these they go naturally into the wine bottle they come out they go back in they can come out so basically it's super easy to use and they provide a fairly reliable seal now you may not have seen this very commonly on regular still wines but if you pick up a bottle of port for example you're more likely to see this you know so that my friends is the world of corks for you and so the next time you're uncorking a bottle of wine don't just pay attention to the wine inside the bottle but also take a moment to look at what is the type of cork that has been used to close the wine bottle with and that in itself should give you lots of clues and thoughts about what type of what style of wine it's got to be is it meant for long-term aging it is meant for early drinking that's a perfect clue right there for you unless it's a piece of natural cork and if it's any of those others like an agglomerated cork or anything else chances are you need to drink it slightly earlier than ladder right so there you go that's one great tip for you today and i hope you're going to give us a huge thumbs up and please guys subscribe to our channel sonal holland wine tv on youtube keep us motivated keep encouraging us because that keeps us going that's how we come back with more and more content for you uh, to to entertain you to educate you uh, and to keep the world of wine going and making it a happy bright place so guys give us a thumbs up show us some love and until then see you next time and until then take care cheers